Sure is. I, we don't get to see you too much. Somebody asked me, said, where is Brother Viking? I said, I guess he just flew the coop. No, he's been on, he has been on deputation. Doing, having a, he's having fun. He's having fun. He's walking in Jesus' shoes. Amen. That's good, isn't it? Amen. He's having fun on the deputation trail. Matthew chapter 24. We're going to try to get up to um, toward the end of chapter 24 so we can get on the parables next Wednesday, Lord willing. Matthew 20, 24. Um, the disciples ask a question there in verse number 3. The latter part, what shall be the sign of thy coming in the end of the world? And the Lord begins to answer that in Matthew chapter 24. And Matthew 24 is the 70th week of Daniel. It's a Jewish question. It's a Jewish answer. You won't find the rapture in Matthew 24. That's why a lot of people uh, uh, have, uh, create a lot of confusion and have confusion as they can't separate uh, the events of Matthew 24 from uh, what happens in the rapture. We're going to get into that and look at it a little bit more. We went through the answer that Jesus came, that gave there. He said, Take heed that no man deceive you in verse 4. Verse 5, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise up against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in divers places. You say, well, these things are already happening. They sure are, but they're intensifying. They're intensifying. And what Matthew is speaking of, if you, and I'm not going to turn there because we did the last Wednesday, we spoke on Matthew 24. You can go to Matthew chapter, I mean, uh, Revelation chapter 6. You and I both know that Revelation 6 is in the 70th week. You'll find these same, same things transpiring in the tribulation. They're intensifying now. They're happening now but they're going to intensify. Apostasy is going to be rampant. You say already apostasy is going on. It sure is. There's going to be many in the last days, deceivers, and uh, many is going to be lovers of themselves rather than lovers of Christ, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of Christ. It's happening now, but it's going to intensify. Could you imagine when the church is taken out how much more that it will intensify? apostasy will be rampant. It will be rampant and uh, more and more. So the Bible speaks of this here in Matthew chapter 24. Now the Lord's prophecy in, um, is being fulled out, uh, again, fulfilled in this present age, but intensifying during the 70th week. And it will come to fruition in Revelation 19, when the Lord comes back, judges the wicked nations, establishes his kingdom, and sits on the throne of David and rules and reigns for a thousand years. Matthew, of course, leaves out the destruction of the temple that Luke and Mark does record. So don't try to confuse the two. When you're reading Luke chapter 21, you're reading... Um, 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 in, in Mark, you don't don't try to confuse what's going on in Matthew 24 with that, because Matthew and I mean Luke and Mark does start out with what happens transpires right after Calvary and the destruction of Jerusalem. This is more than just the destruction of the temple, because um, in in Matthew chapter number 24, it talks about the Lord gathering His elect together. And all that's going to be transpiring during the 70 weeks. And then the Lord's going to come back and pronounce judgment. In, the, in um, uh, Luke chapter 21, it does not do that. It does not do that. I'm going to show you a contrast a little bit later on. But let me go through it pretty quickly. Uh, again, no, no one is led away captive in Matthew 24. But uh, rather, there is a gathering together of the elect according to verse number 31 of Matthew 24. Now, I want you to notice, too, that when the synoptic gospels, when I say the synoptic gospels, that's Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John is not a synoptic gospel, but the synoptic gospels, they know of no other coming of the Lord other than his visible, personal return to this earth as Zechariah records, standing on the Mount of Olives, the Mount split in two. You see that every eye shall see him, Revelation 1-7. You see that every knee will bow, Philippians 2. That is his Revelation 19 coming. You don't see that when he comes back for the church in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I've been over all this. It's kind of a review, but I'm going to get a little further and deeper into Matthew chapter number 24. Now, again, his coming for the church is different. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. 
He comes in the air. He does not come to the earth. We meet Him in the air in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It's plain as a nose on your face. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air to meet the Lord's in the cloud, to meet the Lord's, and so shall we ever be with the Lord forever. And it goes on. Uh, we'll be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 51. You don't see that in Matthew chapter number 24. His coming in power and great glory again. Every eye will see Him, Revelation 1, 7. Every eye will see Him, Revelation chapter number 19. And after the wicked nations is taken out, that is the judgment of the wicked nations, that's what we call the battle of Armageddon. It happens in the valley of Megiddo, the valley of Jezreel. God's going to come back with the word of his mouth. He's going to destroy the wicked armies, those that oppose God. And then the blood is going to run as high as a horse's bridle. That is all recorded. At the pro that's what the prophets knew. That's what the prophets knew. They did not know of a rapture. The rapture was a mystery. Paul revealed that mystery. What they knew of the coming of the Lord was him coming back to establish a kingdom. That's what they knew. That's what they wanted to know. Jesus gave them an answer there. Now, the question by the disciples in verse number four is not what happens in the Christian age, but it's the end of the Jewish age, the end of the Jewish age. What's going to happen in the end? See, Daniel had already recorded that there was an interlude between the 69th and 70th week in Daniel chapter number 9. And you and I have said this before, you and I are that gap. We're that interlude. We, what, we, we interrupted that week, that 69th week. We're in a gap. This is a mystery form of the kingdom. This is a church age. But I guarantee you the fulfillment of a literal kingdom will come to fruition. Why? Because God said so. That's why. And he's going to sit on the throne of David. Amen. He is. Now that's the end of the seventh week. Now, such an age ending predicts the entire Old Testament prophetic world. Jerusalem is going to be the center of tribulation. And when the height of the tribulation is reached, the heavens and the earth is shaken. And Jesus Christ, our mighty God, appears. Uh, and in fact, is to hold your place in Revelation 24. I mean, uh, Matthew 24. I got Revelation on my mind. Go to Revelation 19. Hold it in Matthew 24, go to Revelation 19. The Bible says in verse 11 of Revelation 19, And I saw heaven opened, opened, and behold a white horse, and uh, he that sat upon him was called faithful and true in righteousness. He doth judge and make war. He doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him. The armies in heaven did not follow him in 1 Thessalonians 4 uh, and verse 13. The armies in heaven followed him, and they were in white horses as well. And they were clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That is indicative of the church age saints. You'll find it in Revelation 4. The 24 elders sitting around about the throne, they, they were clothed in white remnant, washed in the blood, and they had crowns. Not the diadem crown that only Jesus wears, but Stephanos. Why? They had been before the Bema seat of Christ, had received the crowns. You don't find the church mentioned after Revelation chapter 3 and before Revelation 19. You don't. And it, it's strange how that's when the seven years start. Revelation chapter 6, most people will agree that that's in the first three and a half years. And the Bible says at the end of Revelation chapter 6, the wrath of God has come. So we are pre-wrath tribulational rapturists. Amen. That's what we are. That's what I am. And that's what the Bible teaches. Now, nevertheless, the armies on heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in linen, fine, white, and clean. Out of his mouth go a sharp sword, verse 15, that with it should smite the nations. And he shall rule... That did not happen in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. God doesn't smite the nations and God does not establish his kingdom and sit on the throne of David. He does not rule with a rod of iron at the rapture. He does that at the second coming. Matthew 24 is speaking of the second coming. When you begin to confuse the parables in Matthew 24, the latter part of 24, and chapter 25 with the church age, it's going to cause confusion. It's all about the 70th week the 70th week. We're going to get into those 
parables as the weeks go. But anyway, the Bible said he treadeth out the, uh, the winepress of the fiercest of the wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Go back to um, Zechariah, if you will. Zechariah in the Old Testament. Zechariah chapter 14. And um, the Bible sa uh, says this. In verse 3, Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. As when he fought in the day of battle. Uh, you can go back and um, you'll find that when he fought for Israel at the Red Sea, when he fought um, uh, several times, Jehoshaphat and other places, when the Lord fought, the Lord's going to do the fighting. Uh, he told, remember, he told Jehoshaphat to sit back and watch. I'm going to do the battle. I'm going to fight. I'm going to do this for you. Uh, he told the children of the, at the Red Sea, the Hebrew children, he said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And then he smote the, the uh, Egyptians. So God did the battle. You know what he's going to do at the day of Armageddon or the day of Megiddo in Revelation 19? He's going to do the fighting. He's going to do the fighting. And the Bible said when he comes back, his feet shall stand in the that day, verse 4 of Zechariah 14. In that day on the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem, on the east and on the Mount of Olives shall cleave. It's going to go right down the middle and shall cleave in the midst toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a great valley moved toward the north and half of it toward the south. And you shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach into Isaiah. Yea, shall you flee like as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah. So just read it. That has never before happened. Now, the, the siege of Jerusalem has happened many times, but it never happened like it has in Zechariah 14, nor Revelation chapter number 19 as God comes back and fights for Jerusalem. All right, now, uh, going on, I'm back in Matthew 24. Matthew, Matthew 24. Uh, Matthew 24 is talking about a Jewish age, the 70th week of Daniel. God's still right now today calling out among the Gentiles a people for his name. That is the church. You'll find that in Acts. I hope you brought your pencil and piece of paper. I see some writing, some's not. Uh, but you, this is hard to swallow in just a few, a few Wednesdays uh, to get it all in. But if you'll write it down, take it home and study it. He's still calling out a people for his name in Acts chapter 15, verse number 14. All right? Now, now um, anyway, um, if you look at Matthew chapter 24 as we've been teaching and preaching as a tribulational chapter, then you're going to find perfect harmony between the three. That is, Old Testament prophecy, perfect harmony with Matthew 24, verse 4 through 44, and with Revelation chapter 4 through chapter number 19, you'll find perfect harmony. There's no discrepancies. And um, anyway, and going in verse number 15, well, we found out how that this thing's going to intensify. We've already preached on Wednesday night how that the gospel will be preached into all the world. It already has been preached according to Colossians and according to Romans, the book of Romans. That's what God said. Paul said it in Colossians 1 verse 26. Also, I think verse 5 and 6 and 7, he said it. And uh, Romans 8, I believe it is, he said it already. And I'm not going to go back there. I've already preached on it. We do know this, that the 144,000, Revelation chapter 7, is sealed. That is a parenthetical chapter. It does not advance chronology, if you'll read it. And at the first of the tribulation, the 144,000 Jews, not Gentiles. You see, there's a myth and a misnomer out there that we're taking the place of the Jews. They call it British Israelism or Zionism. Have you heard of it? You heard of it? We're, we're, not, we're not Jews. We're Gentiles. Now, there might be some Jews in here who have Jewish blood, but when God said 144,000, that's exactly, He meant the Jews out of every tribe, and they're full blooded, virgin Jews. They're going to be sealed, and then we find them again mentioned as they're still preaching after Revelation 11 when the two witnesses. So we've got the 144,000 proclaiming the gospel. We've got the two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11 in the first three and a half years proclaiming the gospel. And then we have the angels in Revelation chapter 14, I believe it's verse 6, am I right? They're preaching the gospel, flying. So they're angels, literal created beings preaching the gospel so that that gospel will be preached according to Matthew 24 verse 14. You get to verse 15. Verse 15 is your midpoint. 15. There's no question. There's no doubt. 
It's right there it is. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place whoso readeth let him understand. Now I've already been through it but just let me refresh your memory. If you really want to talk about it, read about it, understand it. God said when you read about it you ought to understand it. So that means you need to go back and study it. It means you go back to Daniel chapter number 9, you'll find that 70 weeks are determined on God's people, on Israel. Matthew 24 is the 70th week. Is the 70th week. 20, the 70 weeks are established on Israel, on the Hebrew children, and it tells what's going to happen after so many weeks, after 69 weeks, Messiah will be cut off. Was Messiah cut off? He was cut off. He bore the sins of the people. Not only that, but the little pea prince, Daniel 9, is going to come in and destroy the city. Did Titus come in? Yes, he did. Nothing has to happen now before the church is taken out. Nothing, not one thing. If the, if, uh, and, and we do know, we do know the Bible teaches an imminent return. If, uh, if you go through the, the scriptures, Paul uh, was looking for it. John was looking for it. Uh, I can give you scripture after scripture that they would have not said what they said. And some people say, well, they were just saying that trying to cause an incentive of holiness. Now, Paul just didn't say nothing. Not under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He just didn't make up words to fill in the blanks. He was looking for the, ret the return of Christ. It was an imminent return. Yes, sir. We can't. If you, um, if, if, if the rapture was imminent, then verse 15 is a date setter. It, you know, as a date setter. When, you know, what I'm talking about, that's, there's your date setter. If you want a date setter, there's your one right there. It's when, what is that? I guarantee you when the abomination of desolation happens, when the temple's desecrated and the beast is set up, the beast of Revelation 13 is set up in the holy place, that's mid-trib. That's mid-trib. I'm going to give you something too now. I'm going to, this is going to help you and I'm going to use it here just in a minute anyway. So let's go back to Daniel 12. Daniel 12. Daniel chapter 12. The Bible said in verse 11, And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate set up there shall be 1,290 days. 1,290 days. All right, now, there's no contradiction. Look at verse 12. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Thousand three hundred and thirty-five days. Verse 15. No discrepancy. All right, let's look at, um, uh, we got that, two of them right there. Uh, you know, somebody tried to explain away, it's probably the time of the end of the tribulation plus then setting up the kingdom is the difference in the days. Probably so. Now, if you have another explanation, I'll, I'll listen to it. But it's uh, probably that's what it is. Go to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Now, remember now, the, the verse 15 of Matthew 24 is a date setter. It's mid-trib. It's, it's the middle of the week. The middle of Daniel's 70th week. Now, if you'll notice in Revelation chapter number 12... The Bible said in verse 6, The woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's 42 months. They're going to feed her there for 42 months, three and a half years. That's after the abomination of desolation is set up, the three and a half years. And then in verse 12, Woe, it said, Therefore ye rejoice, ye heavens, and ye dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. And of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. You know how much time he's got left in Revelation chapter 13, or 12 and 13? Three and a half years. He knows his time is short, so there, he, the covenant is broken. He's going after Israel. He's going after the Hebrew children. The tribulation has already been going on for three and a half years. There's not peace in three and a half years of the first three and a half years. That's where a lot of people get confused. They say, well, if a peace covenant is going to be signed, that means there's going to be peace in three and a half. No, the Gentiles are slugging it out. Big time. I mean, fighting, shaking the earth, nation against nation. Kings put up and destroyed. Nations being destroyed. In this first three and a half years. The covenant is made with Israel that the Antichrist will not let any harm come to Israel. After three and a half years, when the, um, at the first tri tribulation, when the devil is kicked out of heaven, Revelation chapter 12, as the accuser of the brethren, then hell itself breaks loose on Israel. On Israel. So you have three and a half years there. 
So there's your days. Now I brought that out for a reason. Back to Matthew 24. Am I going too fast? Everybody got it? Bang, bang. You're writing it down? All right. I know you would. Get a tape. Get a tape. Watch it on YouTube. All right. Now let's go on. Now we got mid-tribulation, verse 15, the middle of the week. And the Bible says in verse 16 of Matthew 24, Then let them which be in Judah flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Top not come down, if y'all remember that one. All right. I got that. I got that one. All right. And if you're on a housetop, don't come down. All right, why? And then neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes and wound them. Why? Because you better flee. The devil's unleashing everything he's got after mid-trip on Israel. You better go while, you, while the going's good. Get to the mountains. Just like they went to uh, Petra in, uh, in, in 70 A.D. So they'll be running to the mountains in mid-trip. Why? Those that were saved were taken out three and a half years prior. They're taken out. And now you have professing Christendom. Christendom. You say, you say, is that a, what are you talking about? Well, read the parables in Matthew 13 about the mustard seed and about the wheat and the tares. You see, just because the church is here and we're in the church age doesn't mean everybody's saved. I dare say everybody at Faith Baptist Church is not saved. Not everybody. We're still praying for some to get saved. So what's going to happen to the unsaved when the, the saved are taken out? The unsaved are going to go on in Christendom. They're not going to be destroyed. They're not going to be, all the lost armies won't be destroyed to Revelation 19. So Christendom is going to come in and apostasy is going to be so, you think you've seen apostasy, apostasy today. We hadn't seen anything what it's going to be in the tribulation. I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to be here. Anyway, let's go on now. We got, uh, let them, verse 19, that are in with child, woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Why is it, why is it woe to them? What's well, going to be hard for them to get around? You know what a mama's going to do with a little bitty suckling? She's going to take the mark to feed that baby. Not all of them will, but it's going to be difficult for a mama to just have a little baby uh, during the tree. His baby's going to be sure they are. Natural bodies, babies are going to be born. People still got to get saved in the tribulation. All right, and they're saved the same way they're saved here. Now, by grace through faith. All right, and then the Bible says, uh, pray that your flight not, be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Well, there's Jewish language. We, the Bible tells us in Colossians, you know, about holy days, and people try to make something out of holy days, trying to inflict uh, uh, work religion and grace salvation. It's not, we're talking, we got a Jewish answer here. We got the Lord's Day, not the Sabbath days. Every day for us, for a child of God's a Sabbath day. So we got Jewish language is what I'm trying to bring out. Then the Bible said in verse 21, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor sh or ever shall be. A a again, Satan is going to unleash his few, uh, he's going to really show his colors to Israel, is what's happening. And the Bible said in verse 22, except those days be shortened. I've heard all kinds of things on this, but the reason I read Daniel chapter 12 and uh, Revelation chapter 12. And Daniel chapter number 9, about a 70th week, three and a half years. God has already, already said that this tribulation is going to last seven years. So, so it can't be that God's going to shorten the years. It, it can't be. Because he's already predetermined how long this thing was going to go. He's, pre, he's, already, he's already told us mid-tribulation what was going to happen. He's told us three and a half years later what he's going to do in Revelation 19. The days are not going to be shortened in literal time. So it has to be one of two things. Unless, you know, maybe you could think, you could think on this, study it for yourself. But it has to be one of two things. It could be either death for the saints, and they'll be, because we do know that the martyred tribulational saints are asking God how long he's going to take, how long is he going to be before he takes out his wrath on these wicked nations. Uh, as you read Revelation, it could be physical death, or it could be just maybe the daylight hours. The daylight hours will be shortened in that people can hide and uh, go off the grid. I love that commercial. And I know I'm on YouTube, but I love it. I, I, I love that commercial about some pizza commercial. I think it's Little Caesars or something. Kathy, you know which one I'm talking about? This family says, this man gets all mad and frustrated. He says, we're going off the grid. 
Y'all seen it? Okay. I, I look at her. I said, we're going off the grid. She said, I'm not. <laughs> and they're all, they're sitting there, you know, like a bunch of hobos. And then Little Caesars or whoever this pizza place is comes out with a good deal. And this man says, we're going back on the grid. <laughs> yeah. So, so, but people are actually in the tribulation going off the grid. Going off the grid. So it could be the days, literal daylight hours, shorten, throw your cell phones away, all the amenities away, hide in the mountains. Uh, you say, well, they got ways of tracking you. Well, they're pretty much going to be tracking the big cities. Just go, uh, go somewhere up in uh, Adirondacks or up in Canada somewhere or, or uh, Alabama. Alabama. <laughs> go to Alabama or go to, go to the mountains in Chile, you know. Uh, so, but, but why would you think about running when you could get saved, when you could trust Christ today? Why would you even think about it? You say, why is it in the Bible for us to preach on and read and study and tell people what they're going to have to go through if you don't? You see that? Sir? It does. And, it, and did you know that the Bible says that it is that, that prophecy, it's the spirit of Christ. So, so that's what he says in Revelation 19. So anyway, we've got, um, we, we've got here that the days are going to be shortened now. You know, you can, you can study that for, you like, for what you like, but I, I can say this pretty, pretty safely, that it's not gonna, he's not going to shorten the three and a half years. It's, it's actually going to go out to fruition. Pardon? Read it to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So if we take... It'll cut, it'll cut the days down. I've heard people argue that, Brother Dewey, I have. And if, you know, if somebody wants to believe that the day's actually going to take a third off of it, uh, I still can't get back over the days. And then you say, well, if the days are shortened down to about, uh, what, two, eight, 16 hours a day, then that, you know, it might be a possibility. I, I can't discount it totally, but I'm preaching tonight. I mean, so, <laughs> you know, anyway, yeah. Up north in Alaska, the days are shortened. Now, the 24 hour days are not shortened. The daylight hours are shortened. The daylight hours are shortened, yeah, in Alaska, yeah. So, so and so at the South Pole. They're not the same amount of time, but it's the same hours, but the actual time that the sun is shining. Yeah. Uh, now I, believe, I know that's going to happen. I, I know that's going to happen. There's no question that the sun's going to be turned down. It's actually going to be turned up and then turned down. So, so uh, we know that. And then, then, then with the trumpets, it's going to be turned up and scorched the earth. And every time you see the fourth, one-fourth, from Revelation chapter 6 up to Revelation chapter... Uh, let me see, the seventh trumpet's in Revelation uh, 13, I believe. Am I right? Now, hold on a minute. You'll find a fourth that's dealing with Gentiles. After, after, the, trumpets, after the trumpets begin to sound mid-tribulation, we're talking a third. We're, we're talking a third. Who's got your hand up? Miss King. King. Well, it's, it's, it's not a gap. It's, a, it's 30 minutes of silence. Silence. You know what I do with my, um, on that, where, where is that, by the way? It's in, um, I can find it. But there was, there was silence in the space of heaven, uh, of 30 minutes, in heaven for the space of 30 minutes. And I said, how would you, everybody that knows preaching, I go pretty fast anyway, what if, what if uh, I got up here and just, But that wasn't even a minute that I did that. Did you know that, that 30 minutes, you know what's happening? Is, is after that space of silence in heaven, that's when God rolls up his sleeve and lets the vials come, which will be worse than the seals or the trumpets. We got a lot of hands up. It's about time to go. Yes, sir. Uh, Revelation 8.1 is the verse on the silence. Revelation 8, 1 is the silence. Thank you, dear brother. 
All right, let me go, let me go on real quick. Um, anyway, that's a verse uh, y'all can think about. I know one thing, it's in the Bible, and it means something. It means that either, <laughs> it means a, just the daylight's turned down or man's going to die or something. If any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall rise false Christ and false prophets. What? What did I say? Oh, 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 boy, Miss Kelly about flogged you. Oh, Joe said it. Brother Joe said it. I don't. <laughs> you know, ladies, I really love you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, hallelujah. All right. Um, anyway, signs and wonders in verse 24. Behold, I have told you before where... If they say unto you, behold, he is in the desert. Going, okay, all right, let me, and, and, and then read the rest of the chapter yourself real quick, real quick. I've got it. I won't be a couple of minutes. Revelation 24, verse 15 is midweek. Midweek, you'll now write down with midweek, Revelation 13. That's when the beast is set up in the temple, in the holy place. Write down 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. This is, fifth, verse 15 is midweek. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it's, it's unmistakable. That day, verse 3, shall not come except there come a falling away first. The man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. There is a falling away now. There's a falling away. The ultimate apostasy is going to be during the tribulation when the church is taken out. Now, the man of sin is going to be revealed the son of hell, perdition, destruction. Perdition means hell or destruction. Uh, verse 4, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. So he that as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and know ye, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, then shall that wicked be revealed. So the, the revealing of the wicked is unmistakably recorded at the signing of the covenant with Israel. Read it in Daniel. That's, that's the beginning of the 70th week. We're, we're in a Jewish phase. We're in a Jewish uh, uh, answer in Matthew chapter 24. There's Bible predictions all through. Again, I said the Old Testament prophets only knew of a visible return of Christ. They didn't know anything about a Christ coming in there. They didn't know anything about the mystery form. They didn't know anything about the church. The church is that gap, this mystery form of the kingdom. They didn't know anything about it. And uh, anybody want scripture... Um, I got tons of scripture just for the prophecy. Joel 2, verse 1 through 17. Joel 3, verse 15. Hosea 5, 14. This is all going to be on tape. Jeremiah 30, verse 4 through 9. Ezekiel 21, 27. Ezekiel 32, 7 and 8. I, I know I'm going fast. Get a tape. Get it on YouTube. Daniel 12, 1. Micah 7, 1 through 7. Habakkuk 3, 6, uh, 3 16. Isaiah 13, verse 9 and 10. For sure. Revelation 6 through 18 is the 70th week being unfolded on the world. Amen. All of Matthew chapter 24 refers to the 70th week. The church is gone. Jesus clearly taught that the order of things at his second coming to earth visibly and personal would, would be the exact opposite of what happened at the time of the rapture. For instance, at the rapture, the saved are taken, 1 Thessalonians 4. Does anybody want to argue that? You can't. For the saved are taken, and who's left? The unsaved are left, 1 Thessalonians 4. Matthew 24, look at verse number 37. But as the days of Noah were, so also shall also the coming of the Son of Man be, for as the days were before the flood... They were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage till the day that Noah entered the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them. Who's them? The unsaved. They took them all away. At the rapture, the saved are taken away. At the second coming, the unsaved are taken away and the saved are left. And they populate the millennium and repopulate the millennium. So how in the world could you drag Matthew 24 and make it a rapture passage? It'd be difficult. Some people trying it, and they're confusing everybody with this mid-trib rapture and this post-trib rapture. They're confusing a lot of people. When the return of Christ is imminent. Imminent. 
Imminent. Any time. Any time. You see that? Uh, it's a purely tribulational chapter. The church is not mentioned in Revelation 4 through 18 during the time of the tribulation. Uh, Matthew 24, verse 43 and 44. Uh, the tribulational uh, individuals are to watch for the Son of Man. The church is to wait for her Lord. Think about it. Romans 8, 23, waiting for the adoption to wit. Galatians 5, 5, wait for the Lord. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10, wait on the Lord. Wait for the Lord. And 1 Thessalonians talking about the Lord's appearing to the church. Wait. You are in, in watching and then... Um, the Bible talks about no man knoweth the hour. No man doth knoweth the hour, even when the Lord comes back visibly. Visibly in the... In anyway, um, the, you get to verse number 45 through 51. We get back to the parables. And the Lord begins to pick up where he, where he was talking about in Matthew 13. This is going to be interesting. But I'm going to show you these parables aren't dealing with the rapture of the church. They're not. It would contradict... It would contradict... Um, uh, a pre-tribulational rapture. That's what people are, are, um, are looking at and they're trying to pull and choose. And we'll, get, we'll go through the parables. It's interesting. I had fun anyway. Let's stand to our feet. Amen.